The fact that we came out with these Bonanza grade hits speaks to the technical work that our team did uh, and is currently doing. It's a different phenomenon than, than hmm. gold and any other precious metals. The fundamentals have only gotten better. Uh, the project's only gotten stronger. The team has also gotten extremely strong and uh, we couldn't be more excited about what's to come next at the project. What's up guys, Jay Martin here, investor and host of The Jay Martin Show. And my guest today is the CEO of Tier One Silver, Pete Dembicki. Now, as many of you know, I interview about three money managers every single week and I have for the last two years for my podcast and my YouTube channel. Every single one of them, I ask the same question to. Where are you putting money right now? That's to say, what is undervalued from your perspective? Now, through the entirety of 2021, that was a very challenging question to answer because seemingly everything was inflated in price. If you're looking at the broad equities market, real estate, crypto, it didn't matter. It was hitting all time highs. There was one sector that continuously came back as a response from my guests, and that was junior mining equities. Coincidentally, an industry where I've made a lot of money investing in the past. And Pete Dambicki is one of my favorite entrepreneurs right now because he's running Tier One Silver, a company that I am very, very excited about. So we get these unique opportunities to buy great companies at super cheap valuations when the market corrects itself. And that's what's happening right now. The junior mining sector went on a crazy run in 2020. It really cooled off in 2021. And now we have an opportunity to buy companies like Tier One Silver, who just put out amazing news. They just released their phase one drill results and they blew the market away, but the share price hasn't responded yet. That is your and my opportunity. Now, I never tell anybody what to buy. I don't give investment advice, but I'm happy to tell you why I bought. So here's my pledge to you, 24 hours after this video publishes, I'll be back in the market. So there's your opportunity to get there in front of me and run that price up on me, all right? Here's Peter Dembicki, enjoy. Pete. Jay. I'm looking forward to this. Me too. All right, have a seat. Looking forward to chatting with you. There's a web of directions that I want to go with this conversation. You know, an interesting place to start would be why are you running a silver company? And the reason that I ask that is because you and I actually go way back, right? I've known you for over a decade when you were a broker at Canaccord Genuity and you were financing a lot of deals that I was investing in. So I knew your style. And when your co-chair and co-founder Ivan Bebek told me that he had poached you from Canaccord Genuity to run tier one silver, immediately I got excited, especially when you made the jump. I was like, what does Pete see here, right? You know, and so this is very timely because as you know, on my podcast, YouTube channel, I interview three money managers every single week, right? And everybody's got a different focus. They're looking at different stuff, but they all get at least one question that is the same for me. And that is where are you putting capital right now? I want to know where they see value for the last 14 months, that's been a pretty tough question to answer because everything's been inflated in price. Doesn't seem to matter where you look, broad equities, real estate, crypto, it's hitting all time highs. The one answer that I got most consistently was junior mining equities. Mm -hmm. So that's why I want to talk to you. Great answer for me because I've, I've made a lot of money investing in junior mining equities at the right time. And I think right now is absolutely the right time. So talking about your timing and what you saw in a silver company that made you change careers. Yeah, you said it best, Jay. Uh, you know, I saw I saw a tremendous amount of value in the sector, the use case for it, industrial, the electrification of the world, all your electronics and tools, uh, jewelry. But it also has all the same characteristics as gold, as far as hedge against inflation, safe storage of money. Uh, so that part to me is is very exciting. I love the exploration world. It is dynamic. It's risky. Uh, as an investment advisor at Canaccord. I spent years guiding CEOs from their initial seed capital raises to their pre-IPO, pre-listing raises, constantly asking, you know, what do I do next? What's the next step? And I had this blueprint and I did it time and time again. And to the point where every one of these CEOs came to me and said, Pete, you'd be really good at this job. Hmm. I'm like, and so to, you know, I had many other opportunities and I don't share that a lot because I'm not one to pump my own tires. But sure. um, when this group came to me and I saw how they operated, I saw how they they understood the capital markets as well as the strong technical team and operations. Uh, that was a huge part for me. Okay, I wanna jump into the bones of tier one a little bit. You guys just put out some news, uh, 16 holes, 
that final hole was just a showstopper, right? So catch people up on your projects in Peru. Let's start with Curabaya, mm -hmm. what you guys just put out there for anyone who didn't see the news release. For sure. So uh, again, we've only been uh, a publicly listed company since June. So we're, we're, we're early on into the markets, but we did come to the markets uh, with a bang, mm. you know, and that happened because of all the work, all the technical work and the geology that came to the forefront since I landed in the seat uh, a year ago. And it was nothing short of exceptional, The starting with the rock samples, you know, 300,000 grams per ton silver and up to a kilo of gold emanating from a 20 square kilometer footprint of just bonanza grade. And then of course the natural uh, progression is to do channel sampling uh, to figure out, you know, targeting for drills and where we're going to put it. And again, multi-kilo bonanza grade emanating from everywhere. And so we had to embark on our first uh, ever drill program there. And this was five years in the making from our previous parent company, Orin, uh, when this project was, was put on the map. And so to finally be able to do that and commencing last June on our first program, 5,000 meters, 16 holes into a such a large area you know we got a lot of uh people saying while we were commencing saying oh it could be just on surface maybe you found some sort of surface anomaly and it didn't exist at depth right uh so to come out and within our first six holes have our first plus kilo intercept you know huge sigh of relief yeah this is existing at depth it's existing in the third dimension now let's let's see if we can hone this in and and capture some more and then sure enough, on our 16th hole, our last hole that we finished drilling at the beginning of December, just released to the market a couple of weeks ago, um, our best intercept of the entire program came on our last hole. Mm. And it was great to see, and it was great to, to, to verify the program. It was great to see that it, uh, all this mineralization was occurring at depth, but more importantly, it gave us so much guidance as to where to go next and what we're seeing. So we didn't miss a second after that drill result. We hired two world-renowned consultants to do a site visit down at Curabay in southern Peru. And we wanted to give get a completely unbiased approach. We said, we won't give you the pitch. We won't give you anything. Just lay it on us. Do we have it? Is there something worth pursuing here? Uh, could this be the next largest silver discovery in, in Latin America? And <clears throat> sure enough, both separately uh, came back and said, you guys are on it. Mm -hmm. You guys are on it. What you have is spectacular. Uh, what you couldn't get to, given our permitting boundaries, which you're going to be able to this spring, um, these are your number one targets. And mm. more information has come out since then, and we're getting downloaded live every single day. But there's some there's some strong indications that there's a potential porphyry lurking underneath. Um, something that was a part of our story in the earlier other days, but so focused on this this silver in our first phase. But now, as all this data is coming back, we're seeing. <clears throat> what could we possibly have here? Mm. It's truly exciting. Now, you know, you hit it, right? The first six holes were positive. They've been progressively positive. Actually, every press release that you guys have put out has been better than the last, mm -hmm. right? I'm sure it frustrates you to no end that the share price maybe hasn't responded the way you wish it would. Honestly, as an investor, I like that, right? I can stay in the market at super cheap prices and I just know it's a matter of time. So how do you action the information that you have now, right? You've just completed this program. You're looking forward to the spring. You said this gives you guidance. So mm -hmm. talk to me about that. Yeah. So as I mentioned before, you know, people spoken about, you know, our, uh, our bonanza grade surface rock samples and channels that, that we received back. Uh, was it just on surface? Well, given our nature of, of where we're sitting on this prolific copper porphyry belt um, and, and everything we knew about the, the origins of this land, um, you know, and our drill holes that we got in to date, it turns out that elevation is playing a key role in what we've learned to date. And those, the top drill results that we got from our, from our property came at slightly higher elevations than, than others. And these world renowned, um, uh, experts, the epithermal experts came back and said, in your zone, which is called Kambaya to the north that fell outside of our traditional drill area, uh, the elevation gives us another 250, 300 meters of precious metals window. And the further south you go, that window gets smaller and smaller. Mm. And so we're looking at this and we're champing at the bit to get up there because we know we have a bigger window for higher grades, uh, wider intercepts, and that's going to follow the channel samples that we got where those were our best ones to date as well. We're coming from this northern Kambaya region. Okay. Uh, 20 meters of almost 300 grams per ton silver, multiple kilo plus intercepts. 
Um, so maybe erosion did have uh, a, a key part to play in all this, but the, the guidance is going north to Kambaya and retargeting areas in Kurabaya where there's slightly higher elevation. And then the porphyry story will be tested separately okay. as we map and do some structural mapping on that. But that is a cherry on top. And of course, if, if we do prove that that's there, then that gives us a complete reset evaluation for the story. Okay. Okay. So, you know, I would categorize your team as pretty aggressive when it comes to getting to work. Like, you know, drill programs have always been quite scaled, right? Mm -hmm. Talking about yourself and your, your co-chair at the variety of companies that he runs. Talk to me about the scale of this next program. Um, is, it, is it 200 holes? Do I have that right? That, yeah, our new permit, it's called a, a DIA or a DIA, allows us for 20 additional pads. But this time, instead of two holes per pad, we're allowed 10. So that's up to right. 200 holes in this. Now, okay. obviously, that's a lot of drilling and probably not one that we're going to get all completed in this next phase. Mm. Um, but it gives us the flexibility on each pad to kind of fan out our drill holes. So, but it just gives us more opportunity, more flexibility to be more nimble uh, and just as aggressive. And are you going to have to go back to the market for capital for this program? You know, at, at, at this current rate right now, we're in no critical need for it. Uh, we have money in the treasury that lasts us through till June. And so what we're seeing in the market as of late is uh, the price of silver picking up. Mm. Our, our stock, for whatever reason that be, as a junior miner, trades very highly correlated to the price of silver. Mm -hmm. And if silver goes on a run, I mean, we saw it when we listed in the market uh, last June, mm -hmm. silver was at thirty-one, thirty dollars an ounce, yeah, and we were we were rocking. Actually, probably got ahead of ourselves, right? We had a, I think a, uh, two hundred fifty million dollar market cap without a drill in the ground. Yeah, that wasn't any of our doing. It was just the 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 narrative, the excitement around silver. Yeah, and that was my first time seeing it. You know, and getting back to when I was brought on board, uh, Ivan he made a comment. He says, "When silver goes, you will you will feel it." It is a, it's a different phenomenon than, than hmm. gold and any other precious metal. So that was my first taste of it. Unfortunately, we saw silver come off uh, since our first day of listing and, and trickle all the way down to almost you know, $21 an ounce. But as of late, uh, the macroeconomic picture, uh, some of the, the world crisis out there, it's, it's, it's certainly giving it a little bit of, of lift. Um, so again, back to your question, we're in no critical need for, for treasury right now. If we get some tailwinds moving forward and it's supporting our share price where we think it, we should be valued. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll come to market and, and get ready for our next phase. Right. Right. And I think you could draw that parallel, that share price that you explained between so many of the best junior money equities that are listed today, 2020 was really hot. It was hotter than a lot of people mm -hmm. expected. And, you know, 2021 was a bit of a cool off period. There's something about, you know, I follow the people. That's my number one, number two, number three criteria. It's people over everything every single time. If there's a downside to that, it's that investors get overexcited before anything happens about the right people, which kind of speaks to how hot tier one came out the gate. Mm -hmm. You know, like you said, $250 million market cap before you did anything, yeah. right? Yeah. Like that speaks to the confidence the market has in the individuals running the company, right? Look at what we have now with verified Bonanza grade drill results, channel samples coming in, rock samples emanating from everywhere. If we brought this project to our same group uh, 10 months ago, would we take it? And it's a resounding yes, of course, we would take it in a heartbeat and we'd you pay would. a lot of money for these results. So, um, uh, the fundamentals have only gotten better. Uh, the project's only gotten stronger. The team has also gotten extremely strong. And uh, we couldn't be more excited about what's to come next at the project. Okay. You have another project in Peru, Hurricane, mm -hmm. right? Some blue sky upside optionality there. Let's touch on that real quick. Sure. So last last year, you know, the Michael Hendrickson, our chief geo, had been working um, in the background for a couple of years actually to include Hurricane Silver in the portfolio. Uh, we acquired it from a group of former Newmont uh, geologists, and we had a ton of faith and trust in the, in the technical work that they provided to date. Uh, so we brought that into the mix, not as a hedge against Kurabaya, but to provide our shareholders with another world-class swing. And since then, we only had a very small window. Uh, once we got social access in Peru to get in there, we sent a small team up there to do some reconnaissance channel sampling. And within a couple of weeks, they came back with just incredible channel sample results uh, with veins outcropping everywhere. We found some great indications that there's high grade silver there. We have historical mining adits and shafts that mm. are believed to go a, a few hundred meters uh, underground. 
Um, and so once upon a time, someone was there, you know, mining silver, which gives a huge indication. Mm. It's nothing that we can use on a resource. No, but it's anecdotal support, right? It's, it's incredible. And so to have multi kilo rock samples plus kilo channel samples, uh, in a great area located just north of Cusco, um, we can't wait to get back up there and bring that thing, hopefully to drill ready stage by the end of the calendar year. Okay. Okay, excellent. Now, I want to touch on the team real quick. You know, my audience is familiar with both Sean Wallace and Ivan Bebek, uh, your co-chairs, right? And uh, and the wins they've had in the past. That's why I'm so confident in this team. Um, new senior vice president of exploration, uh, Christian Rios. This guy's Mr. Peru, right? Two previous discoveries in country. Geology, very similar to what you're working on. Mm -hmm. uh, catch me up on Christian. Yeah, Christian, even better than two. He's had three. Three That's right. silver focused exploration uh, discoveries. Uh, he's had a phenomenal uh, resume working with Bear Creek in country. Mm -hmm. Christian was a part of our family for the last few years on the op side. And to be able to finally utilize his, his expertise. You know, it's funny, we go to uh, trade shows and, and conferences and you get to meet a whole bunch of different CEOs from a, a bunch of different backgrounds. Uh, but those that have had any experience in Peru came right up to us and they say, you guys have Chris Jarn on your team, don't you? And we go, yeah, he goes, he is a phenomenal geologist. Hmm. And you're just like, wow, like we're sitting on this, this gem in, in our group and to be able to set him loose and say, Christian, curb is yours, hmm. hurricane's yours. You know, what, where do we go from here? And he's like, I got it. Hmm. He did not hesitate from day one that we brought him into that role to say, I'm going to take this by the reins and, and we're going to, we're going to nail this. So to see him so excited about these projects and he would tell us he is, he is not lacking in, in the truth department. He would say, you know, I just, I just don't see it, but he's, he's on it. He's excited, which gets us excited because anytime you have a guy like that, that's, that's seen this time and time again in Peru, uh, it's, it's so encouraging. I love that. Look, I mean, this, it's really like a stars aligned scenario for me, right? I love the management team for the reasons I discussed, the reasons you just shared. Um, you know, the share price is exactly where I want it to be. <laughs> You've shown some amazing results, right? With the early results, right? I, the best is yet to come. That's what I believe, right? And you're, you're a team that eats your own cooking, right? 40% of tier one silver is owned by executives and close associates, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. It's the most important data point because you make money when I make money, right? And as a shareholder, I can't ask for anything more. Yeah, for sure. You gotta, you gotta be aligned and everyone has to have uh, a reason to drive this forward, but over and above money, right? I understand the business that we're in and maybe the shareholders that we have today won't be our shareholders we have a year from now. Sure. If tier one silver is around a year from now. And so mm -hmm. uh, it's, 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 I have to know that being a capital markets background and, and a sitting CEO of a company, uh, I have to be able to speak to all different kinds of, of shareholders because everyone has different goals and objectives. Of course. Um, all I can do is set expectations correctly. And uh, I think at tier one, we've done a phenomenal job with our leadership and our technical team that we're not excited over nothing. Mm. We have proof. We've seen it in our first program. We've seen it in the work that we've done at Hurricane. And we've seen what we can do when, when the stars do align with the previous successes that our leadership has shown. And so it certainly sets tier one up for, for a phenomenal next 12 months. I love that, Pete. Anything else you want to share with myself or my audience before we wrap it up? You know, no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly in a, in a great spot. You mentioned the share price is a great where you like to see it. For me, absolutely. <laughs> but as a CEO, it, you know, it can, it can add a little bit of heartburn from time to time just because, you know, we're, we're not, we're not, uh, we're not ignoring it. We mm -hmm. understand where, where our share price is, but, uh, trust me when I tell you, um, you know, things will turn. And if we get some tailwinds in the, in the silver market and once people, uh, as your audience will see the story for what it is, um, we're going to get drilling here really soon. And that's always the most exciting part. You saw our company the last time we just about embarked on drilling and we were at a dollar 90 per share. Yeah. Right. Uh, so let's bring on those times again, cause that's exciting. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. And like I said, there's a, a rare window here. You can buy extraordinary value at, at a cheap price, which I love. Look, Pete, thanks so much for coming back on the show. It was great to catch up with you. Yeah, thanks for having me. Good to see you.